In this demo, we're going to take a look at installing a motherboard. Now, this is probably one of the uh, more complicated things that you'd have to do on a system because you're only going to do it either if you are building your own system or if the motherboard in a current system has gone bad. And that's not something that happens on an everyday basis. You know, when we try to troubleshoot, we try to isolate and do simpler things. Installing the motherboard itself is not that complicated, but since everything connects into the board, uh, getting everything disconnected and then reconnected in the appropriate place can sometimes be uh, prove a little bit challenging. Okay, so we're going to take a look at uh, an empty case and just go through the process of installing the motherboard into that case. Now we're first going to begin by connecting an anti-static wrist strap, which I'm wearing around my wrist, uh, to the. Uh, to the chassis of the computer, and that's always very important to prevent static buildup on your on your person, especially when we're dealing with uh, such an important component like the motherboard. Okay, now on the 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 case of the computer, we actually see. Uh, some risers here. These are simply just risers that screw into the holes that you see. Now on this board these holes aren't etched. Uh, in some cases uh, when, a, when a computer case can hold multiple board types they'll have some sort of legend or etching on the, the holes on the chassis so that you know how to line it up. It's not really that big of a deal if it doesn't have it. Uh, just simply hold the board over it and you'll see the, the screw holes in the motherboard matching up with those screw holes on the system, on the chassis. Okay? You also have the ports and the ports have to line up uh, with the area of the case that provides a connection for them. Now this be, can become a little bit daunting. It's actually easiest if you try to uh, install the CPU onto the board before you get it in there because the heat sink actually gives you something to hold on to. You're simply lining up the, the, the screw holes uh, on top of those risers and making sure that your connections are then uh, lined up with the back of the board. Okay, so you can see there, there's a, there were a couple of holes on the board. It's easy for me to do this. Basically, before you screw anything in, you just want to take a look at each of the screw holes and make sure that that is on top of one of those risers. And so generally speaking, we have about six of them. The back uh, connections will interface with the back of the chassis, so things like sound cards, network cards, the USB ports, those should all be uh, snugly fit and you should be able to get to the other side of those from the chassis of the computer. And then we just have to uh, install our screws. So now as we're inserting the screws, there's really no specific order that you need to go. The most important thing is not to tighten those screws. Okay, as you're trying to make sure it's lined up, we're making sure that it's lined up with the risers that are there, but we're also trying to make sure that it's lined up with the connections for all those peripheral devices that are built onto the board. All right, so as long as you don't torque these screws, you should be okay because if you have it misaligned at all, then you're going to have to just redo it. The other thing that's important is to try to use a screwdriver that's not that won't get magnetized. That can cause damage, and you also just want to try as much as possible to not touch the screwdriver, which is why I'm putting the screw on it, to not touch the screwdriver to the motherboard itself. Again, if you don't have a screwdriver that's going to become magnetized, that's less of an issue, but still just a good practice. Okay, so once those are screwed in, we make sure that the connections are good at the back, then you can kind of just, if you have a little ratchet screwdriver, this is easy, just give it kind of one one more twist on each one. And we're good to go. Now we want to connect in order to make sure that we've installed it properly, really even before we uh, install any other devices you can connect the power to the motherboard. 
So in this power supply, we have a whole bundle of, of cables over here, but our main power connector is going to be the same. Now in this case, we actually have a 20 pin plus the four pin. So it's a 24 pin connector on the board. And these just kind of slide together to go into my ATX power connection uh, over here. Them being separate, just try to stick them together. Again, this is notched. Press down till you hear a click. And there's going to be a little give in the board, and that's normal. It is raised up off the top of the, uh, or the bottom of the chassis, so that is, that's a, that's a normal thing. Okay, so connect that. In some systems like this one, we have a variety of case fans as well. And so it's probably a good idea before you ever power those on uh, to connect to that. The back of this is very similar to a hard drive connection. It's actually the same thing as a hard drive connection. Uh, and so I'm simply going to connect those two together. Let's flip that over. There we go. Okay, connect that together. This is the fan on the back of the system. In this system, there's a fan on, on the front as well. Okay. It's a higher end, higher end system, and so just it's a good idea before you even try to power it up to make sure that you've got everything connected that you go ahead and, and connect these fans. And you saw there a couple times putting it in the wrong way, and it, it won't, it's not going to let you put it in uh, the wrong way. So installing the motherboard is really down to risers and six screws plus some key points. Then we are left with the process of installing all the additional devices.